Good day students, welcome to math.serve.com. In this clip, we're going to be going over our updated version of the Accuplacer Elementary Algebra Practice Test. Uh, we're going to be going over problems 11 to 15. If you have any questions at any point in time during this presentation, just feel free to ask your questions in the comment section below and we'll be more than glad to support you. All right, let's take a look at question number 11. Um, it reads, which of the following list of numbers is ordered from least to greatest? Now, if you inspect the options that you have, you notice that there are four numbers that repeat themselves in different orders in each of the options. So our goal is basically to ID and order um, these four um, numerical values, okay? All right, so let's just um, uh, pick option A and then order the, the, the four fractions provided there. And then whichever one, whichever option matches that ordering um, pattern, that will be the correct answer, okay? So before we get started, one thing you want to note concerning um, how to compare fractions. If you're ordering fractions, what you want to do is you want to make all the denominators equal to the LCD and then compare the numerators, okay, keeping in taking into account the sign also, all right? So this is what we're going to do. We're gonna find the LCD of the denominators of all the fractions in option A, and then we are going to order the fractions using the numerator. So let's write down what we have. We have um, negative one third, um, negative three over five, we have two third, and three fifths, okay? Now the denominators are three and five. So the question is, what is the LCD of three and five? What is the smallest number that three and five can go into evenly? Um, the answer is 15. If you look at these two numbers, they're co-prime. In other words, none can go into the other. So if you multiply them together, that should give you the LCD, which is 15, okay? So the goal here is to convert all the denominators. Um, well, we're converting all the fractions to equivalent fractions with the denominators equal to the LCD, all right? So let's take a look at the first one, multiply the denominator by what to get 15? In order to get 15, you multiply by five, top and bottom, and uh, multiply across, you get negative five over 15. All right, and then the next number, multiply this by what? What do you multiply the five by to get 15? You multiply by three, top and bottom. So you get the equivalent fraction of negative three over five, which is negative nine over 15. Next one, three in the denominator, so you multiply by five, top and bottom. So the denominator becomes the LCD. So we have the equivalent fraction, 10 over 15. And then uh, three over five, you multiply by uh, what? What do you multiply five by to get 15? Three, top and bottom. You get the equivalent fraction, nine over 15, okay? We were asked to order these numbers from least to greatest. So um, just put up your number line. Um, <clears throat> we know that the more negative you become, the less you are, so this is less. And positive is on the right side relative to zero, and this is greater direction, okay? So you're increasing when you go from left to right. So look at all these numbers. The denominators are the same, so we're going to focus on the numerator, okay? In the negative world, a bigger negative number is smaller, okay? If you owe more money, you have less money than someone who owes less, okay? So that's the bottom line. Now, um, let's see which one out of these two is smaller? The smallest number is negative nine over 15 because it's, um, it has a bigger, it's a bigger negative number compared to uh, negative five, okay? So we put here negative nine over 15, which is equivalent to negative three over um, five. The next one is negative five over 15 which is equivalent to negative one third, okay? And then the next one is, oh, now we'll switch to the positives. 
Now here, whichever numerator is small, that's a little less than the other one, okay? Because you're not positive. So 9 15 is uh, smaller than 10 15, hence 3 fifth goes next. And then the biggest number, let's see, zero is on here. The biggest number is 2 thirds. Okay, so when we're ordering it from least to greatest, we're going to have negative 3 over 5 as the smallest, followed by negative 1 third, followed by 3 over 5, followed by 2 thirds. Okay, so following that sequence of, of fractions, the correct answer is option letter B. All right, let's take a look at question number 12. Uh, it reads, if 5t plus 2 equals 6, then t equals. Now, what we're doing here is isolating a variable. What is another word for isolating a variable in, a, in an equation? Uh, when you are isolating a variable, you're solving, okay? And one tip to keep in mind is that when you're isolating a variable of simple equations like this, it's as though you're reversing um, MDOS. Please excuse my... Uh, Dear and Sally. Okay, so keep that in mind. Now, the steps we're going to use to solve the equation or to get t isolated, we will subtract 2 from both sides first and then we'll divide both sides by 5. Okay, that should accomplish the goal. So we have 5t plus 2 equals 6. So we subtract 2 first. All right, it's like we're doing from those backwards. You add and subtract first. So you have 5t equals 4. And now we can uh, multiply or divide in order to get t isolated. In this case, we're doing the inverse of multiplication, which is division. Divide both sides by 5. And then you end up with t equals 4 over 5. This is what t is equal to. Our answer is option letter C. Okay, let's take a look at question um, number 13. So it says, for which of the following equations are x equals 5 and x equals negative 5 both solutions? Okay, so you notice what's provided here. We are provided with solutions and we are asked to find an equation. All right, so just a real quick reminder. Whenever you're given, you're asked to find equations that result in a solution, what you're doing is working backwards. Okay, you're, you're reversing the process involved in generating the solutions. Now, in this scenario, we have two solutions or two roots. So we are basically trying to create a quadratic equation that has 5 and negative 5 as its solutions. These are the steps we're going to follow here. First of all, we'll set both equations equal to 0. And then we're going to expand and simplify. Okay. So let's go ahead and uh, do that. We have the answer is x equals 5 and um, x equals negative 5. So we're going to set both of them equal to 0. How do we accomplish that? Subtract 5 from both sides here. And then you have x minus 5 equals 0. And then on the right side, you add 5 to both sides. You have x plus 5 equals 0, okay? Remember, when you're solving, um, finding the zeros or solutions to a quadratic equation in standard form, namely set equal to 0, as you can see in these four options, what you do is you set the factors equal to 0 so you can isolate your variable, right? So that's what we're trying to do here. The variables have been isolated. We're working backwards and setting, trying to set quantities equal to zero. Okay, now we're going to use the reverse of the zero product property to write down the following statement. If this is zero and this is zero, what do you get when you multiply two numbers that equal to zero? When you multiply them together, you will end up with zero. Okay, bam, just like that. This is the reverse of the zero product property. Now we're going to expand as indicated in step number two. So you're going to, since you're multiplying two binomials, you can just foil it out first. Outer, inner, and last. Okay, so let's multiply that out. x times x 
you add the exponents is x squared, negative 5 times, well, x times positive 5 is plus 5x, negative 5 times x is negative 5x, and negative 5 times positive 5 is negative 25, equals 0. Okay, so this is the expanded form. We're done with step number one and two. Lastly, we're now going to simplify. Are there any like terms that can be combined? The answer is yes. 5x, positive 5x and negative 5x can be combined to zero. So you end up with x squared minus 25 equals zero. As the equation, it has five and negative five as its solutions. So we can clearly see that our answer to question 13 is option letter D. All right, let's take a look at um, question number 14. It says if x is not equal to 0, then u over x plus 5u over x minus u over 5x is equal to. Now just a real quick reminder. In order to combine fractions, the denominators must be equal, basically the LCD. Okay, so this is a mistake that students might make. I'll say, oh, you know what? u over x plus 5u over x minus u over 5x. They just combine the numerator and the denominator horizontally. So they say, okay, this is um, u plus 5u, 6u minus u, that's 5u. And then in the denominator, um, you have x and then plus x plus 5x and that's 7x. Okay, that's absolutely wrong. That is not how you do it. Now, what's wrong with what we just did? You are combining fractions when the denominators are not identical. Okay, so the denominator is supposed to be identical first, namely the LCD, in order for you to combine them. Okay, so we have u over x plus 5u over x minus u over 5x. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to extract the three denominators and find the LCD. Okay, so question, what is the LCD of x, x, and 5x? Okay, what's the LCD? Well, the goal is basically you're trying to make them identical. Okay, so you look at what's common amongst all of them and try and fill in what's missing, what makes what's missing in the other ones. So if you look at this, all the three denominators right here, you have x, 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 okay, that's common. What else is different? You have a five here. So if I can multiply the denominators and numerators of the other one by five, guess what? I've arrived at the LCD, okay? The LCD is going to be five x, but let me show you how that works. So um, I'll multiply this by 5, top and bottom, and this one by 5. The reason is because you have a denominator term with 5, and these two need a 5 in order to uh, be identical to it. Okay, so when you multiply, you have 5u divided by 5x, um, plus here you have 25u divided by um, 5x, minus u divided by 5x. Now, all the denominators are now identical, so we can proceed to focus our attention just on the numerator. All right, so what we're doing in essence is 5u plus 25u minus u, or 1u if you want to look at it that way, divided by uh, 5x, because the denominators are now identical, okay? So 5u plus... Uh, 25u is 30u minus u divided by 5x, okay? 30 minus u is 29, so we have 29u divided by 5x. The answer is option letter C. All right, let's take a look at question number 15. It says the solution set of which of the following inequalities is graphed on the number line above. All right, so one thing to note concerning graphing inequalities is that in order to graph a simple inequality on a number line, you want to isolate the variable first, okay? So these are the steps we're going to use to find the correct answer. 
First of all, we're going to find the symbolic representation of this graph, this graph inequality on the number line. After we write that inequality down, we're going to then proceed to step two, where we're going to solve each inequality to see which results in the inequality that we generated in step one. Okay? All right, let's go ahead and do it. So let's look at what we have here. This graph tells us that the solution region is two and everything to the left. We talked about this before, that if you're heading to the left, that's less. And if you're heading to the right, that's greater. Okay? So greater than less, just like an L. Okay? So less than is like an L greater goes the other way. And two is included. Okay, so what's the inequality here? We have x is less than, because it's everything to the left, or equal to, because we have a closed circle, 2. So this is a symbolic representation of this graph number line here. So the question is, which of these options, when solved, when um, x is isolated, matches this inequality x less than or equal to 2. Okay, so we're just going to go ahead and work, work through them and see which one the correct answer is. All right, so let's start with option A. Okay, so for option A, we have 2x minus 4 is greater than or equal to negative 3. To get x isolated here, we'll add 4 to both sides and divide by 2, okay? So add 4, add 4. You have um, 2x is greater than or equal to negative 3 plus 4 is 1. And then you divide both sides by 2. And we have the solution x is greater than or equal to 1 half. Is that our desired inequality? Nope. So this is not the answer. So what do we do now? We proceed to the next option. The next alternative, B. 2x plus 5 less than or equal to 6. We solve this for x and see if we have a match. If we do, we're done. If we don't, we move on to the next option, okay? So subtract 5 from both sides of the inequality. That leaves you with 2x as less than or equal to 1. And then you divide both sides by 2. Or by 2 divided by 2. And then you have x is less than or equal to 1 half. Is that the desired inequality? Absolutely not. So um, option B is not the answer. Two down, two more to go. Okay, let's proceed to C. We have 3x minus 1 is less than or equal to 5. Uh, so we add 1 to both sides. That yields 3x is less than or equal to 6. Then we divide both sides by 2. I'm sorry, by 3. The coefficient of uh, x, divide both sides by 3. And then you have x is less than or equal to 2. Is that our desired inequality? Absolutely. So option C is the correct answer. Because when it says solved for x, you have um, an inequality that matches um, the graphical representation provided here. So our answer for number 15 is option letter C. Thanks so much for taking the time to watch this presentation. I really appreciate it. If you found the contents of this tutorial helpful in your preparation for the AccuPlacer Elementary Algebra 1, uh, please give us a thumbs up. Your positive feedback is very valuable to us. If you have any questions as indicated earlier, just ask it in the comment section below and we'll be more than glad to support you. Don't forget to subscribe to us for updates to um, all the great math tutorials to help you with your college math preparation. And also you can sharpen your skills for the test by taking our interactive um, practice test. More clips can be found on mathgoodserve.com on the test prep. Thanks again for watching and have a wonderful day. Goodbye.